Hello, Bill Carroll, Zinni 62 Media, and it is a wonderful, wild, wild card weekend. Uh, we have Cleveland Browns and Houston Texans, then the Miami Dolphins versus the Chiefs, the Steelers versus the Bills, Green Bay Packers versus Dallas, Rams versus Lions, and the Eagles versus Tampa Bay on Monday, the 15th, which is Martin Luther King's, well, the celebration of Martin Luther King's birthday. A lot's going on. Uh, of course, a man who many people consider the odds-on favorite to be comeback player of the year, Mr. Joe Flacco, though probably missed too much of the season, but an amazing story. And of course, will be going up against a person who maybe couldn't be a son, but could be his nephew in uh, Coach Bernard Stroud the fourth. This should be a fascinating game. You know, a 38-year-old and a 22, I believe, year old. Uh, one of the not the greatest, but one of the greatest spreads in um, in starting quarterback um, history, I'm guessing, <laughs> between the two. And we're going to walk through some of these games. The game that, the thing in that game will matter most is how Stroud's line holds up against an extremely talented Cleveland front seven. I believe that you're going to see... Uh, the Texans want to establish a running game. Obviously, the Browns will run the football and run it well. That's what they do. That's kind of their whole bread and butter. The over-under is 44.5. I think I'm going to take the under in most of these games, with the exception of maybe Dolphins. Well, even that, probably the under because of the weather. So I'll probably take the under in every single game. Uh, you know, the one exception probably would be Steelers-Bills. I think that may be the one game that goes over. I think all the rest are probably unders. But let's walk through it. So, the Browns are giving to to the Texans. And it'll be interesting for, to me on a couple of different uh, levels. The Texans, while as a whole, as a unit, they may have been there before. They have some players who have been there before. And... Uh, two and a half in some places, I guess. So uh, Houston is getting two and a half. Instead, Cleveland's giving two and a half. You may see two sometimes as well. Two and a half is obviously preferable. Uh, I don't think Singletary will do that much. I think they'll finally be used, you know, throw Pierce out there. But he busted, you know, one good run against them the last time he faced them. And... That is their one soft-ish spot on that really good Cleveland defense, is they're not always great against the run. They're middle of the road in EPA, though they're number one in run stop, uh, run stop win rate. They've given up 65 yards or more to a running back in four of their seven games in the most recent, in the last seven games, including getting beaten pretty badly in the run game uh, in one game. So Singletary is an efficient. Guy, I think he's going to get somewhere in that 66 to six to 70 yards in terms of rushing. And I think, that, like I said, they'll spread it out a little bit. Um, I think that, you know, the Browns will prevail, but I think the Texans will give them one heck of a fight. Uh, other things to look for in that game. Uh, watch out for Elijah Moore. I think they'll try to take away Cooper a little bit. Watch out for Elijah Moore to have a good game. I don't mean blow your mind, but 44 yards, maybe six, five or six receptions, you know, targeted maybe six or seven times. And then uh, I think Joku might end up scoring. If you're looking at any time touchdowns, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Joku gets you one of those. Okay, moving on. The other games, uh, other games I think are particularly interesting. They're all interesting, right? It's the playoffs. Uh... The Bills are nine and a half point home favorites. That's a big number. The Bills, I'm pretty sure, will probably end up winning, winning this game, but I just have a hard time believing, especially in like the conditions, they're going to go up and down the field. My only concern is turnovers. Now, if the Steelers start giving a bunch of turnovers, they could get run out of there, but I think they're going to play a very safe. They're going to run the ball a lot. I'm taking the, the Bills to win that, but not to cover nine and a half. Uh, walking through some of these other games. I think that 
uh, I'm going to save the Dolphins and Chiefs because that's probably the, the one with the greatest interest to most people. Uh, I'm going to move on to talk about Packers Cowboys. So, obviously, you know, McCarthy revenge game, blah, blah, blah. Packers are one of the youngest teams in the NFL. And that is both a good thing and a bad thing. But their defense has struggled quite a bit. I think that C.D. Lamb, they scheme him open a few times. But the person I'm looking for to have a big, big game is actually Brandon Cooks. Uh, I think that Cooks ends up scoring at least once, possibly twice. Well, once seems safer. Probably ends up with about s- between 60 and 68 yards receiving. You know, Lamb's not going to go off for another, you know, 150, 200 yard game, but he's going to get his, you know, I'm thinking about 88, like his number, and probably another, maybe a receiving touchdown for him. And I think that they might get a rushing touchdown, but maybe from Dak, you know, down in the goal line area. But I do think they win. I do think they cover. Uh, But I think Packers keep it close early on, and then, you know, they pull away and win that by about 10 points later. Rams Lions is fascinating. Once again, revenge game, so to, so to speak, uh, for Goff or Stafford. Pick one. But um, either way, the difference in this game to me is going to be each team's secondary. Both teams are going to run the ball and want to run the ball and run the ball well. I think both teams will pretty much zero out each other in the run game. About the same amount of carries, same number of yards. To me, the difference will be run after catch. The Rams are pros at it. Are the Lions secondary players able to, hey, you're going to give up some receptions, right? You're able to stop them. Are these six to eight yard pass patterns becoming 12 to 15 yard plays? If they are, the Rams win this game. Uh, I do think the Rams win this game. I'm picking the Rams. I, I think that the Rams are going to probably have the slightly better game plan, uh, slightly more adapted to the team that they're facing. And... Uh, 51 and a half. I'm going with the under. I think 48 feels about right for this game. Uh, but I think the Rams uh, prevail. I think they win by four. So, you know, 40, I mean 40, uh, you know, 27, 21, somewhere around, around that range. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, other things I think will end up happening in this wild card weekend. I'm looking long and hard also at another one that I, that obviously, you know, the final game, and I'll go back to the Kansas Chiefs and Dolphins game. The Eagles and Buccaneers is a big game for both teams. Nick Sirianni has watched this team struggle, you know, and sort of go from being 10-1 and one now, you know, 11-6. and six. I think – I keep saying it's a get-right get right game – uh, Todd Bowles has a lot of pressure on him. They're nine and eight. They got a spot in the playoffs, but some people wonder if he's the future. Uh, obviously, Tampa Baker, Reagan Mayfield is a guy who's playing for his NFL future as well. I think it's gonna be a super close game, like very, very close game. But I do think the Eagles pull this out. I think the Eagles survive, and they're giving three. I think this game. Ends up right about the number. I think 43 and a half. I think 44 is about right. I think 24, 20. So they cover just barely. And I guess it's just barely an over by by the hook, by half a point. Okay. Uh, Now, let's take a look at the game that everyone is discussing so feverishly. The Tyreek Hill, quote unquote, revenge game. Dolphins Chiefs. To me, this comes down to, well, obviously, how do the warm weather Dolphins deal with the weather conditions, but also running game. Obviously, we love to talk about the passing game. The passing game is the thing that everybody wants to talk about. But one of these teams is going to end up dominating in the run game. And you wouldn't think that would be the Chiefs, but I think the Chiefs might actually end up outrushing the Dolphins, which sounds crazy. And not all from one running back. I think they're going to spread it around. And once again, watch out for Mahomes to bust two long runs. 20-plus yard runs. A 22-yarder, a a 26-yarder. If he ends up this game with 61 yards rushing, right on, six attempts, I will not be surprised. And I think that will spell doom for the Chiefs. Not that Tua is not athletic, but he's not as creative or as willing in terms of running. And... 
other things I'm going to look out for in this game. Definitely some dinking and dunking for both teams. I mean, they're expecting, you know, minus two with a wind chill of minus 23. I don't think either team's going to want to throw a deep down the field, but the team that's better suited to throwing the ball deep down the field is obviously the Chiefs, so they have, been good, have not been good at it. Uh, but I think that, this is my prediction, I think they get a big play to Justin Watson that helps them to seal this game. I think they end up surviving this game. I think it ends up about 23 to... Sixteen, you know, something like that, and I think that the Chiefs do survive. So uh, those are my wild, 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 wild card weekend predictions. I'm um, either going to look very, very smart or very, very foolish, but either way, I'll be talking to you again in just about a week. Once again, Bill Carroll for Zinni Sixty Two Media.